All right. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Coralie. Thank you for joining Hi. us. I appreciate you all being here today. I think this is going to be a really fun topic, and it's a very important topic. And so uh, maybe it'll get a little saucy. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Always. Why not? Yes. So let me go ahead and introduce the two of you. So I have with me today um, Michelle Stillwagon. Michelle is an LMFT and a certified sex therapist in Louisville. And she has been in private practice for 16 years. She specializes in couples, LGBTQ and lifestyle partner partnering, intimacy, medical and desire issues, as well as offering EMDR. Michelle, what don't you do? And <laughs> trauma work. <laughs> Um, with a goal to, I like this term, like loosen the Bible belt beyond office walls. You can find her educating at UofL, attending small group consults, offering guest lectures, or working closely with OBGYNs, pelvic floor therapists, urologists, integrative healers. Again, what don't you do? Uh, to spread sex positivity far and wide in Kentucky. She is also committed to bringing more sex therapists to the region as a supervisor, for the American Association of Sexuality Educators, Counselors, and Therapists, in, for those who are in training, right? Yes, yes. And at home, she likes to, she tends to her garden, her beloved therapy dog, two incredible teenagers, and a partner of 26 years. That's right. And most evenings, she can be found dancing in the kitchen to R&B or hip-hop like a boss. So, <laughs> welcome, Michelle. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. And then we also have Coralie. Hi, Coralie. Coralie is one of my colleagues at North Star, so I'm really excited that you're joining us. Coralie is also a licensed marriage and family therapist. She earned her bachelor's of psychology and a minor in sexuality and gender studies from Pennsylvania State University, and then went on to get a master's of science in social work with a specialization in marriage and family therapy from the University of Louisville which is going to be a huge uh, theme. I think we have a lot of U of L people. <laughs> this awesome. Yeah. Everyone um, in Kentucky and beyond is welcome, but alumni is very yes, cool too. But you know, <laughs> you, I just, I, I get to, I feel like I'm an honorary U of L. Like I don't, I didn't go there, but I know enough of you all that I, I want to cling on. So uh, <laughs> she's currently pursuing an advanced certificate in sex therapy and sex education through the university of Michigan as part of becoming an accredited sex therapist through the American Association of Sexuality Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. So thank you both for joining us today. Um, we really wanted to talk about this topic because we know that a lot has been changing in people's sex lives since the pandemic hit. And, you know, even before this, you, you probably, you deal with this every day, right? That, sexuality and our sex lives are very much um, an issue in couples counseling, even in our own individual counseling. And so even if there wasn't a pandemic, I still think big, important topic, but definitely something that we're going to see maybe people feeling affected by and how it's changed and tweaked their lives. So mm -hmm. thank you both for coming. I will turn it over to you all to go ahead and have a discussion on this. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, and I'll hop in at the end. If anybody has questions, they can put them in the little Q and A, and we'll we'll answer those at the end. All right. Yes, please ask away. Just yes, questions. you get All right. three for the price of one here. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. So, Michelle, in terms of starting out, I know we've had a few conversations about this and things that we wanted to be able to mm -hmm. cover. Um, and so we may both have different experiences with populations we've worked with, but just kind of hearing a little bit about how you've seen people's lives change and just really common experiences that have come up related to intimacy and relationships with this pandemic. Well, it's been, it's been really interesting because um, it's, a, it's a sort of double-edged sword, I'm finding. Like one we're all together, we're in our smaller clusters, we're at home, um, some of, many of us, uh, not all of us, but uh, working at home, or maybe one person's working at home, some of our kids are doing um, NTI at home, 
uh, in their room. So like there's a lot of behind door screen action all within the same house, but then, you know, trying to, you know, uh, keep everyone healthy and stay in small clusters and things. Um, there's a lot more together time. So that can be really great because it can add some like cool flexibility to like, oh, let's have a little like make out session. Oh, it's lunchtime. Let's have lunch together and kind of talk and it can increase mm -hmm. the intimacy. On the flip side, everyone's kind of in each other's spaces. There's not a lot of places to go. There's not a lot of space to get out. There's, you know, gyms weren't open for a long time. Some still aren't. You can't go and get a massage easily. Like some of the self-care things that people do yeah. just for them are now more difficult to get. So I feel like couples are struggling, at least uh, the couples that I see, um, a lot to figure out how to balance like self and together time, family time, and managing all of this all within a very small space, small cluster. Um, and so communication and frustration um, seems to be one of the, like two of those things, uh, sometimes like feeling too much togetherness um, and, and not knowing how to set boundaries well or not having enough space to kind of clear and, and, and for sex too, like um, a lot of couples feel like my kids are here. I can't, sure. you know, have sex. My house was like Vegas this summer. My kids were up to like 2.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have teenagers. They're not like tiny people. Um, but I couldn't really give them a reason to go to bed because like there was time was meaningless in the middle of like the most, you know, intense isolation and there was not really anything to do the next day. So we got all flip flopped and my kids were up so late that my husband and I not got no time together until like three thirty in the morning. And I am too old to be having good old conversations right. or I think the togetherness has time to even start when they're yeah, sitting up. Right. Um, so, I mean, so, but I find like people are, are struggling with even just how do we carve out time to have sex when our kids are right there all the time? Or if your kids are going to like Catholic schools or some of the schools that have recently opened, then there's the exposure issue. And so trying to be safe and having to isolate a little bit more or stick within those clusters. Um, and I think sometimes those have even become, because this has been going on for so long, a little incestuous within the clusters, not like meaning truly incestuous, but like everybody is kind of so together, even in those clusters, like even that intimacy between friends and, you know, trying to figure out like getting people, people getting on your nerves or not having enough places to go to vent things mm -hmm. that are going on. I just feel like, um, learning how to communicate really well, learning how to set really good boundaries and renegotiating expectations. Like I can't get everything done, even though I'm at home all the time. I'm working at home. My kids are at home. I'm making breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my kids, like, or they're making it. We're having to kind of clean up. And so I feel like uh, a lot of couples are also struggling with, I'm here, should I, so I should be doing more. And then getting frustrated that there's no respite. There's no time, like, to just chill. And so I'm finding a lot of people are having a hard time relaxing. And relaxing, as you know, is so important to, like, getting in the mood, being able to just be in your body, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So uh, what, are you, what are you seeing? Uh, because I know, you know, I see a lot of couples with a lot of, and families, um, but I know that, you know, you also see, um, you know, a variety of folks, too. So what, what are you noticing? Yeah, so kind of with that piece of home is our work, home is our play, home it ha was our world for mm -hmm. a lot of people who weren't able to go to work and kids not going to school and all it serving so many roles at once, <laughs> whether someone, you know, is diagnosed with ADHD or just, you know, struggling with attention. Yeah. I think when you're having to transition so much, I'm on the computer, I'm on a call. Now I'm taking care of a little one. Now mm -hmm. my animal went to the bathroom because they're out because I'm home. That all of those transition pieces can make it really difficult. And then mm -hmm. when, you know, say a partner comes home, 
you know, if it's a two parent or multi parent household, Mm -hmm. you may have been home all day, but you've been working and you have been juggling so much that Mm -hmm. with the other person there, Mm -hmm. uh, they, no person really has gotten that respite. It's looked like work either way and finding. Yeah. You don't have that 25 minutes in the car or that 10 minutes in the car to like from work home. And some people are at work. But I even feel like there's a, an anxiety even for those that are going to work and coming home because then there's an exposure issue, especially if, like, they're a healthcare worker. And, and I do work with quite a few folks who have, like, chronic medical illnesses or have some uh, immuno, um, deficiency issues and autoimmune um, issues and also that are frontline workers. And for them, I feel like it's even – there's even less of a desire to connect, to touch, to be close. So like when they're coming home, they're thinking about like detoxing, stripping off their clothes, making right. sure their family's safe and even fe- feeling sort of like pariah. Um, right. I know we've talked about that stigma. Like how can I feel desirable? How can I feel like I want to connect with my partner when I feel like I could be carrying around exposure Yeah, and I could, you know, anyone I touch, like something bad could happen when I come. Right. So I think touch is a big, I mean, I have definitely found that. I'm, I'm sure you have too, but I think beyond like sort of renegotiating roles, lowering expectations, it's okay for the laundry not to get done, especially if that means I get 25 minutes to spend with my partner, you know, um, or if there's more of a distance thing, like, time to FaceTime or if I'm dating that I put that as a priority instead of just trying to do, 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 do all the time. Um, Learning how to renegotiate all those like old rules and things that we took for for granted that were easy to do. Finding time for yourself and not just taking care of everyone else. Um, And then, you know, especially if you have smaller kids, I feel like the, the stress for the folks that have tiny kids that don't know how to do a lot of the stuff that we're doing, if they're doing online or have to wear a mask all day and are confused about that, you know, um, and, and going to school or going out, there's so much more stress on those families that like my biggest thing for folks right now is encouraging creative ways to connect creative responses to finding everyone's needs and getting things done and kind of like slow your roll. I think one of the things coronavirus and this pandemic has taught everyone is learn to find your outlets differently. Um, Learn to get creative about what it is that you need. But if you don't communicate well, or you're so with your partners or with people all the time in your home and don't feel like you get any personal space. I feel like there's all this friction. It's hard to communicate needs and especially sexual needs because sometimes the last thing you want is to have somebody more in your space after you don't feel like you have any space. And I feel like that's a really fascinating piece of this, but we are learning to have to get really creative with the way that we take care of ourselves we take care of each other and we find that balance, mm-hmm. um, especially, you know, when it, when it comes to, you know, uh, sex, if you're constantly feeling frustrated, I feel like there's a lot more conflict going on between couples that I see, um, especially now everyone's over COVID. Everyone's done, wants to get back out into the world wants to expand their worlds again, is, are frustrated, but also trying to be aware and compassionate about the fact that sometimes we're not protecting ourselves, we're protecting other people in our communities by being mindful, continuing to stay in our clusters, isolating, wearing masks, etc. But it's real hard to make out with a mask on. Absolutely. Real hard. And we joked about there being an article for that and it being met with a lot of different reactions from people. Yeah. I want to definitely speak on that kind of touch starvation piece and also some of the keys to that, you know, what, with what you were saying about those outlets kind of being stripped, it happened really fast where at the beginning there was this sharp transition. We're not going to school anymore, or we're not going to work or we're going to work and get ready for the demands to go up, especially for, you know, healthcare folks. And 
you know, that idea of getting touch, whether it's through contact sports or dance or dates um, or massage, like you said, Mm -hmm. that looseness and that freedom, even if and when we get a vaccine, those things will be very different. I know even now with like Mm -hmm. clothing stores or like when movie theaters come back, a lot of us most likely likely will be carrying ourselves differently of maybe Mm -hmm. not having that same freedom. And so that's one thing that I saw with a lot of people of Mm -hmm. having that hunger for touch. Um, Oh gosh, yeah. One positive I know is that pet adoptions went up immensely. You know, that was better to touch and get to cuddle. Um, And we have more time at home for some people. (laughs) The one flip side that I've seen for that uh, starvation of touch has been for some of the moms, especially for little ones, where if the, when daycares and schools were closed or it was summer, you mm-hmm. know, they were constantly getting touched, but not mm-hmm. a touch. It feels good. I'm receiving and I am yeah. to it all. Yeah. But like mama, you know, child grabbing on you and, just having so much uh, stimulation coming your mm-hmm. way that say, once again, if there's a partner or if it's a single mom or someone mm-hmm. trying to date, just the idea of like being touched out and having given so much yeah. that you weren't really getting that touch of getting to receive and getting to lay yeah. back. And just like you said, feeling sexy and wanting to be intimate it's not yeah. usually conducive unless we can feel relaxed and curious and open. Right. Anxiety spiked up, demands. Oh my gosh, so much. spiked up. It's made it hard. Mm-hmm. I, I think one thing though, and people might say, or who aren't from the sexuality field, they might be like, why are we talking about this? Why does sex matter? I know we both might have thoughts, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about why sex and intimacy may matter more than ever in mm-hmm. a time like this. Well, I mean, I think you touch, uh, you, you're talking about, you know, part of that is we're, we are, um, we're pack animals, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we need relationships, we need connection. And um, that touch starvation is a big deal, or, or being over touched in a way that makes you not embodied. When you're all up in your head and anxious, you know, which I think the anxiety spike for everyone, you know, and the fear of everything that's been going on um, and just the level of distress and shift and lack of routine has just bumbled everyone up. Um, And so like trying to get into a new routine that still incorporates things like sex, even though your family is all around you all the time, finding that space for it, like touch, like just even intimate conversations, you know, to be able to have like a good connect time with uh, a person, uh, like another adult is, is so difficult right now. And sex is important. Um, you know, I think it's part of our mental health. It's one of our primary drives, you know, and because we need that collection, we need that connection. We need that, you know, pack animal mentality of being part of a tribe. If we're starving, you know, for alone time, but then also still needing to just like bring it down a notch, calm, release, relax, feel tight, you know, feel, feel held, feel comfort. You know, a lot of us find a lot of comfort you know, even for folks that are dating in being able to, um, you know, find a connection with somebody, find a way to feel like that pleasure sensation. And I think with all the distress and the anxiety, it's particularly important for mental health right now to have a sex positive connection to yourself, you know? And so, one of the things, you know, I've really been encouraging folks to do, and, and let me just to put a caveat here. Some of the things Coralie and I will probably talk about in this may not fit for everybody. You know, um, we're, we're kind of out of the box sex positive thinkers. And, and that means essentially like uh, uh, as long as there's consent and pleasure, those are kind of the rules of sex positivity, right? So not everyone is going to like or, connect to maybe some of the things we're suggesting that could be helpful um, for managing all of this 
different routine, lack of routine, need for touch, but also alone time, balancing things differently, wanting to be intimate, wanting to have sex or wanting to have a sensual connection. Um, even if it's like online, you know, because dating is a whole different, and we'll get to that a little bit later, you know, um, a whole different ball game from, from those that are partnered. Um, but, uh, so I, I'll just say, if take what you want from what we're saying and what we're offering and recognize we're not here for shock value. We're really, you know, we're wanting to encourage people to think about and talk about and, and be mindful of some things that can be beneficial, like masturbation. You know, if you don't have time or you're being, you're, you're not partnered or you have a distant partner or your partner's a healthcare worker and has high exposure, you know, you want still there to be a connection of some kind to yourself and to your body to get out of your head and into your body helps ground us, get us out of that fight or flight anxiety stuff. And uh, also, um, uh, um, sorry, I just saw something flash up on the thing and I got distracted. Oh, I think it was um, just an encourager for any folks who are listening that may kind of have the freedom to ask questions yeah. to come up. Oh, okay. Wait, maybe waiting for like a formal break or something like that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I want people to take what is meaningful to them, take the rest with a grain of salt, Absolutely. but know that we're, you know, we're trying to reach a large audience here of people with a lot of different sexual lifestyle, sexual needs, sensual needs, asexual folks that are just needing touch and companionship, you know, across the board. So there's only so much you can do at an hour. Um, but I don't want anyone to feel shocked. So you would ask what's the importance about sex. I think mainly that, you know, um, with there being uh, a need for uh, just feeling some normalcy, feeling connected to your body, feeling out of your head and into your body, and feeling like you can still have something that, I won't say routine, but that's special, that helps you kind of get out of all the distress world stuff, you know, including politics and stressors mm -hmm. going on in your cities and violence going on and all of those things apart from COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we are just in a really rocky rocky time and sex is one of those natural release and relax dopamine increasing serotonin increasing positive um uh connection um opportunities that is part of our our primary drive so when you go without it it can cause more friction more frustration especially if one partner is higher drive than the other and you know and and needing that's their love language. They need more physicality. Those are the things that can cause like additional friction within the home outside of all the other external factors that are creating. So I just feel like it's a good priority to even be able to take space for yourself to give yourself that pleasure if you can't, yeah, uh, you know, find other things. Um. I'm going to go to that question one second. I just want to piggyback off of what you'd said, yeah. Michelle, um, you know, because with all these things happening, that I feel like from an outsider, someone could say, like, why, why the big deal about sex? Or when there's these other needs, what, what is the focus for sex for? And it makes me think of, um, you know, with the World Health Organization, they have physical health and they have mental and emotional health. Actually making sexual health one of their fourth pillars of something mm -hmm. that's a priority and something that mm -hmm. has a huge impact with all those other areas of health. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the pandemic and our routines kind of going to crap, you know, people saying, I don't know what time it is. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> We're saying that really special thing makes you think of these rituals and anchors that we have that do get us out of our head mm -hmm. and into our body and <laughs> do help us get to feel connection yeah. Um, and just meet so many other needs, stress relief, comfort, um, mm -hmm. feeling desired and wanted, mm -hmm. um, having something carnal or having something tender. It can mm -hmm. look very different, um, mm -hmm. but it's definitely worthy of conversation. And 
also the piece of whether it's emotional intimacy or physical intimacy, when we are good and solid in our relationships, that, that helps bring our stress relief down too. And that we can. Yeah. And I think we're all needing that route. Mm -hmm. Even for friends that are dating, like you don't have to be partnered to have that. You know, there are, there are different complications with dating. um, And, and there have been some things that have been positive um, that, you know, even um, Corley was telling me, you know, that she was noticing like on some of the dating sites and things and her clients talking about those things that, um, you know, that that there's like FaceTime options now that are, that are yeah. safe and within like a, a um, that's, that's new because I, right. Being able to message, being able to video mm-hmm. chat within apps to really, especially at the beginning, facilitate mm-hmm. having a connection, getting to know mm-hmm. someone as intimate as you can when you're not supposed to see them in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to do that maybe even before exchanging numbers. Um, yeah. That's a really nice upgrade with a lot of dating sites. Um, Michelle, I don't know if you want to, maybe we can, uh, look at the question. It says, how do you feel about couples scheduling time for physical intimacy? Yeah, we're, uh, I don't have the questions popping up on mine except popping and then leaving. So my screen might be doing something weird. So if you'll, if you'll, uh, tell me if you see pop-up questions, that's cool. Sure. Sure. Do you want to take that first and I can go after or vice versa? Whatever. Uh, Um, go ahead. I'll, I'll speak to it briefly. Um, I think it's, re- I think it's really about whatever works for a couple. Um, mm-hmm. I do think, you know, at the beginning of dating relationships, um, you know, typically there might be a lot of passion or there might be a lot of fireworks and chemistry mm-hmm. and kind of getting to ride all of those hormones and that newness and just like, we never know what's going to happen or when or where it's going to happen. And that's mm-hmm. really exciting and fun. And then typically when people either are cohabitating or have been together a while, sometimes a little bit after marriage, some of that changes and there's these other demands and we're existing in space together and we're roommate, lover, Mm -hmm. partner, maybe some other title, trying to run a household. There's a lot of other roles and things that can come in. And so sometimes intimacy falls down. Um, The beginning or that newness of a relationship, um, I kind of see as corresponding to spontaneous desire where Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can just like look at someone and start to feel desire and it just can come out of nowhere. And that's Mm -hmm. really great. But sometimes people think when that drops off that there's something wrong with the relationship or that it's broken. And I know one thing that Michelle and I both um, kind of want to offer is that there are other types of desire. um, One called responsive desire, which, you know, I think Emily Nagowski, a really great sex, uh, educator and professors talked about it, like being able to be in a neutral space, maybe reading a magazine and then feeling your partner kind of like nibbling your neck or something and then being like, Oh, this is kind of nice. And you were almost like at zero when it started, but in response to something, Mm -hmm. like you weren't in the mood, but then as things progress, you're like, Oh, and then at the end you're like, why don't we do this more? That kind of thing. And so sometimes responsive desire can come in conjunction with scheduling it. If folks aren't able to make it happen or fit it in in their life spontaneously, that's completely fair. And scheduling it does have the potential for there to be some responsive desire coming on, like being able to anticipate that and being like, maybe I'll Mm -hmm. shave my legs today, or maybe Mm -hmm. I'll put on a lotion that smells good and makes me feel good in my body. Mm -hmm. Um, And one other caveat to that piece with scheduling um, sex, um, most people when they meet, not always, but most people when they meet, they're not residing in the same household. Um, Mm -hmm. Usually there's some separation and they come together. So in some ways, uh, you know, every time you're seeing someone coming from apart to together, there's the possibility of sex or intimacy and so you kind of have the anticipation and the schedule of if we're scheduled to see each other this weekend maybe sex is on the table and that's Mm exciting when you're living with someone or when you've been together a while the fact that maybe you're with each other every day or Mm -hmm. in a pandemic with each other all the time 
Mm -hmm. You don't know when it's going to happen and you don't have this mutual agreement of this special time sex Mm -hmm. on the table, which Mm -hmm. relates to those um, kind of differing expectations. If someone's Mm -hmm. an everyday person and someone is once every two weeks is fine. So I think if a couple isn't having Mm -hmm. sex and wants to have more communicating Mm -hmm. and potentially scheduling it and being able to feel positive and look forward to it can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I encourage folks, especially now, because if there is a lack of time and space, even the, I think the biggest hang up that people have, um, and I'm sure you found this too, is but then it's not spontaneous, but then it feels like forced. Does this now become a task on our list to like check off? My answer to that is it doesn't have to, it can, it can be if that's the way you frame it, right? But my answer to that is scheduling sex can actually help, especially in times of high anxiety, or if you're having a hard time relaxing, or you don't have a lot of space because there's all the other, you know, people in your family running around the house all the time and and, um, and in close proximity, um, or, you know, you're doing a long distance dating thing and your partner, you know, can, you know, you, you're in t- different time zones. And, and so you're meeting each other online to talk and, and, um, and uh, to have, you know, time together. I think scheduling can help you get in the mindset, prepare for that, kind of create the quiet space that you need put things in place to make sure kids are in bed or, you know, you tell them don't, knock on the door unless you're bleeding. (laughs) Um, You can set up a sound machine. You can put them in front of a movie, you know, whatever it is. But I feel like it gives you a sense when we're in, we're so out of control right now with so many things that uh, it gives you a sense of a tiny bit of control. And then you can do some things to be titillating. You can look forward to it. You can, like you said, like think about like, if I get anxious, you know, about like not wanting to, uh, because I've been running around all day and doing all things, like I can take a shower or a bath and like relax for a minute and get in the mood to the extent that it, I'm possible. Um, it, you know, my partner might send me some sexy texts. I can't wait to be with you tonight. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm really looking forward to just being able to like hold each other. Like, gosh, it feels, you know, exciting to know. Like, so it can kind of even, especially in long term relationships, um, it can kind of give you a a bit of, you can make it titillating instead of feeling like, oh, it's not spontaneous, therefore it's a task. You can co-create whatever you want with it. So I think scheduling in this time particularly can be really helpful. Um, And I also think if you're having a hard time getting to the connection, you're having a hard time making space for that. You're feeling just frantic about like, I just don't know when we're going to be able to do this. It can, again, slow your roll is kind of my, my thing that I'm, I'm encouraging folks. It can slow you down enough to go, okay, I know Wednesday and I call them play dates. Like Wednesday's our play date, our sex fun, our, you know, our, our adult play date. And then we don't have to have sex. We can just hold each other naked. We can give each other massages. We can do all that touchy stuff. You know, if you're partnered, we can get online and have sexy texts or FaceTime or mutually masturbate on a safe site, an encrypted site, something that is like, you know, uh, appropriate and, and, um, and healthy for you. Um, you know, we can, uh, you know, we can make that space and not worry about how we're going to fit it in, how we're going to fit in and and then get to the point of frustration. So I'm a fan of it, um, especially if things have gotten kind of off or communication's gotten off or there's just a desired difference. And it's easy to, for one person to kind of prioritize sex way less than the other person's feeling really at need for that, like just scheduling it. Wednesday nights are our fun time. Wednesday nights are our play dates. We'll go with what we want. If we don't, aren't in the mood, we won't be disappointed or we can pleasure each other, but not have penetrative sex. There's so many different ways, you know, we can play. And then the more you do those things, the more the natural organic, I feel like follows. 
So if you're in a rut, I also think scheduling can kind of help you like bump out of that a little bit. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that it can be positive as long as you and your partner have talked about it, kind of talks about the expectations of it and that you make it something that's good and, and I also really encourage people when they're doing that kind of thing, like scheduling to be focused on sensual and not just sexual. So we're not goal oriented. It's not everybody has to get off at the same time. This is not Hollywood. We don't all have orgasms at the same time, like boom, boom, boom. Um, uh, you know, fireworks going off in the background and all this. We're, we're different people and, and we have to relax and we have to get into the space and we have to get into our bodies. And so even if it's just like really great sensual time where you're smelling and touching and tasting and, you know, setting up like a nice environment and it's soft and it's quiet and whew, you just kind of get that release and relax, just holding each other naked even or slow dancing or like I said, massage or whatever it might be, those kinds of dates that you plan at home and play dates that you plan focusing on the sensual can actually help lead to the sexual feeling less demanding and, and more, um, and more like you're going back to like courting or dating or, you know, kind of those like early kind of like make out sessions, grinding with the jeans on, oh my gosh, my parents are coming home, you know, whatever, like kind of, and that can be kind of fun. But if you have kids in the other room, you probably need to schedule a time during nap time that you're going to take a lunch break if you can and, and have some time together, um, you know, and meet each other where you are. So that's a long answer, but hopefully, hopefully that helps. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I feel like I remember seeing some statistic and it was talking about like of times when people have sex, like maybe, 75% of those interactions start with cuddling. And we're talking mm -hmm. about like, especially in this pandemic <sighs> in the same space, but they mm -hmm. may not be having sensual cuddling. You know, mm -hmm. and if it is, maybe it's in front of the TV, but kids or someone else could be there. Mm -hmm. But if we're coexisting around each other, but not having this time together, where without these distractions, mm -hmm. without these things pulling us away, maybe we're not even getting that cuddling which a lot of times has the potential to lead to sex. So if we're not getting yeah. that touch in the first place, how can we expect something that's maybe larger on the scale of even more full body contact? Um, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, especially if you're, if you're dating or you're in a consensually non-monogamous relationship or polyamorous relationship too, uh, you may not have the option to see people the way that you were or to engage with people one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And so I think, especially if you're doing more virtual kind of um, connecting and dating, whether it's a new person that you're getting to know or a person that you just can't be with uh, in person because of, you know, all the things that are going on. I also think that having those spaces to have FaceTime, to have connect time, to have, um, you know, uh, an ability to, to touch base and be together, um, you know, that almost has to be scheduled to some degree um, because, um, uh, you know, otherwise it can get lost in the shuffle. Um, and so, you know, in, in those kinds of circumstances too, I, I definitely encourage it. But I encourage that you make it kind of fun. You know, I think everyone's sort of dizzied having lost routine and the kind of things that they could do, meet out people, that kind of thing. So a lot of my question for folks, especially around like relationship building and sex and intimacy is what are you anchoring in? Are you anchoring in yourself and needing time you know, away and getting respite and recollecting and then being able to come back in with a little re-energy, re feeling re-energized. Um, alone time without guilt is so important for people to give themselves permission to. Masturbation time is so important. It doesn't have to be partnered to set a time, to schedule a time for you to just be with you. But you might need to tell everyone else, I'm going to be in the room 
please don't bother me. I'm taking some alone time. You can schedule that too, you know? Um, but then, you know, being able to uh, do that without guilt. And again, we're talking about establishing new routines. If it's better for you to know that Wednesday, Thursdays are your play date potentials with flexibility, because things come up, um, by the weekend, you may be having more organic desire again. You know, you may be having more connect. You may be feeling more connected to your partner. Some of that friction may have lowered. But what are you anchoring in right now? Because everything is a no. Um, and so knowing that you have one thing that you can control, one thing you can look forward to, one thing that you can build on, you know, uh, I think can be like a, a really positive thing, um, particularly because there's so much not normal right now. I love that for what are you anchoring in right now? Yeah. Like, I'm just like imagining being asked that question. And I'm, like, well, I'm anchoring in this. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Also think, you know, with, you know, if you schedule sex and you both want sex outside of that, you both can have more than that. You can have outside of the container if you're in agreement, but knowing that that container is there to go to yeah. can be huge. Yeah. Um, and I also yeah. think, you know, I'd heard something from someone and I wish I knew it was to give credit, but it was just talking about, and I like, uh, we've been talking about Wednesdays, Michelle, like say Wednesdays at eight is the play date time. You may have that set container structure, but like every day, even in pandemic time, which can feel different every day we show up and we're different. We have gotten different amount of sleep, mm -hmm. had, had different things to eat, mm -hmm. um, different interactions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different hopes, different beliefs about the world. And so coming back to that same space and time, we are different. And within that container, we don't know what it's going to be like. We're bringing different versions of ourselves like each week or each moment we do that. And so just knowing that there's that potential and that there's mm -hmm. um, different things we may be bringing to the table, even mm -hmm. if that container staying the same, what's within it, mm -hmm. sex cuddling touch mm -hmm. laughter has the potential to look different and that can be really exciting and that's mm -hmm. worthy of more than just a check on a to-do list it's worthy oh, yeah. of enjoying uh, each other yeah. or your yeah. own presence if you're scheduling a self-date yeah 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 I just think that it's really important for folks to realize that during this time it's okay to change the way you do things it doesn't mean something's broken. It doesn't, we want it to not add to the anxiety. If, if you're a higher drive, higher desire, you know, libido person and your partner, you know, is having a lot of stress or anxiety, um, you may need to take it upon yourself to make more time to masturbate. That doesn't mean that's going to be your life forever but also take pleasure in that because there's some respite there. There's some control there. There's something that you can take back for yourself. You can anchor in your body. If that's, if, if touch is like one of your, you know, and, and sex, physical sex is one of your love languages and you can't get it from your partner. Instead of making it this tug of war, who's going to get their needs met today you may have to meet more of your needs right now because everyone, you know, is ex experiencing coronavirus and, and uh, COVID-19 and, and a lot of different times. Um, but, you know, this is traumatic. We are having a cultural worldwide, not, you know, multicultural traumatic experience in real time. I don't think that's happened since the depression, you know, so we also have to recognize that like, it's okay for things to change because we're all feeling the stressors of everything around us and what's also happening in our homes and taking care of yourself, being able to communicate your needs. And if your partner or your lover or your friends can't meet those needs for you, it's okay for you to figure out how to meet them for yourself. And I think that's so important for people to give themselves permission and not feel guilty about that. Um, and, 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 and be able to balance that self other, you know, if I'm not able to meet your need, I'm not in a place where I feel sexy. I feel embodied. I'm just in my head. Um, there's a million anxieties going on. I'm trying to juggle too much. 
I might try, you know, to connect with you and then say like that I, I can't, I'm just not in the space instead of getting personal, taking that personally, getting that, you know, upset about that, being able to respect and honor. We're all, we all handle trauma differently. We all handle these kinds of, and you know, and anxieties differently. Meeting your own needs is more important than taking it out on yourself or your partner that something must be wrong or broken. Because I do think that the level of conflict, the level of abuse at, uh, at home with their, you know, with, uh, when there's domestic abuse already in the system, those things have increased. Um, and even the level of potential divorce have increased during this time because it is so stressful. So reminding yourself that like, being sexual is a way to manage stress, is a way to be, and masturbation is a safe way to get your needs met, partnered or otherwise. And mutual masturbation is a safe way to have that pleasure, you know, whether you're in bed or online or over video or on FaceTime or whatever, hearing your partner get off, hearing them get, you know, turned on, those kinds of sensual you know reminders too you don't have to touch if you can't or aren't able if there's something going on where you really need to be cautious of their health you're at a distance you're dating you you know they're healthcare workers you're you're, you're sleeping in different rooms right now because you know things are just chaotic whatever the case may be self and other balance is so important right now um because there are a lot of concerns about safety, you know? Um, and I will just say like using protection is really important right now, not exchanging a lot of bodily fluids, being cautious about if you're not in a monogamous uh, relationship um, or a live in partner relationship, um, you know, being really careful that you, you, you don't have to abstain from touch, but you do need to get really comfortable asking questions about exposure, especially if you're dating or, you know, your, your clusters, even, even your friends, like exposure, to have. <laughs> being able to isolate, recognizing, have you been exposed to someone else? Like um, using other things like, you know, toys and sexy time online and, um, you know, sending photos again, not under 18, always safe, being mindful of legality, and you know, way. but to, to a partner, if that feels comfortable to you or taking a Polaroid and putting it in their lunch, you know, do we have Polaroids? I totally just aged myself. Um, but you know, a Snapchat, whatever. <laughs> um, uh, you know, being able to sexy talk a little bit more, but just thinking about, even if I can't exchange fluid with you, even if I'm being really careful to, to be protective, or if I'm dating, having to get comfortable asking about STIs, about exposure, about how big a cluster is, about, you know, where a person is, those things are so important right now. And they're not things we're comfortable with. And we're not even comfortable with in a long-term partner relationship asking, are you in the mood? Can we do this? Can we try? And if it doesn't go anywhere, we'll be okay with that. You know, it's, it's, we are learning to have to negotiate new rules in different languaging and get really comfortable with stuff that we as a culture don't like talking about, but it's a safety concern and safety pleasure, consent, those are the things that like, really, I think Coralie and I really want to get across the most is yeah. however you do it, it's important. Find a way to make it happen for yourselves or for yourself. Don't feel guilty. Know that space and time, you may not be able to depend on your partner if space and time have gotten cut. So take it upon yourself to do what you need to do and then hope that you can also partner. Right. And, and that's the thing. All of this has happened and our lives have changed, but those needs that we have don't just mm -hmm. like end. And just because mm -hmm. it's a global pandemic, your need to be seen and be loved mm -hmm. and be cared about and cherished, whatever it may be, that stuff mm -hmm. doesn't get erased. And I really liked what you were saying, Michelle, about 
the creativity aspect because yeah. we may have had these things that we kind of were like, okay, I'm not getting attention from my partner, this mm-hmm. person I'm seeing, but I can get it in my dance community or sports mm-hmm. team I'm on. And with those things taken away, that need mm-hmm. still matters. And yes. you, know, you were saying about trying not to feel guilty and giving yourself yeah. permission. Talk, clients and I have been talking Meet your about needs. Yeah. Yourself, grace. Um, because this is unprecedented. And so we're learning how to meet our needs or needs of others um, when we haven't had a lot of preparation. And I, I love some of the ways people have come up with things, even if it's Yeah, like what have you heard people doing, doing that's kind of creative? Obviously, kissing with masks on, I don't really think works, you know. Yeah, but That's not one of the <laughs> ones that I'm like, this is something great that's come out of it. But but the Netflix parties um, with friends yeah. and family, um, I Date think night you know, having dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, having dinner um, and, and a movie together. Um, I've seen people um, take up hobbies together that mm-hmm. you know kind of work with whatever the exposure level is, whether it's at home mm-hmm. or in the community, um, mm-hmm. and having those shared experiences helping mm-hmm. them to see each other in another way. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you're not just someone I come home to um, mm-hmm. and think, oh, they're kind of this or kind of that. But like when we're doing this shared mm-hmm. experience, being able to see different traits and aspects of someone and kind of mm-hmm. be like, wow, I didn't know you had this part of you. And mm-hmm. maybe I'm finding myself really attracted to it or really intrigued by it because it is new and different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I will say too, there might be a question, and I'll just say this really quickly too, like um, one thing that I feel like has become a phenomenon in the last really decade, but um, is particularly intense right now, a lot of people go to things like social media, or, um, you know, uh, um, getting on their phones, playing games, that kind of thing. checking their email nonstop, just because you're at home working potentially doesn't mean you have to be available 24 seven for all of that. I really, that's again, a place where I really encourage boundaries because a lot of times it's easy to forget about or distract from or eliminate intimacy from that cuddling, from that connect, just being in the same room because we're parallel play on one side and the other of the couch, both, you know, one playing Candy Crush, the other checking emails or going on Facebook. And it's, and, and, and I think we think of those things as a nice distraction or something to get, to get done to like eliminate thoughts and worries in our mind or being able to go on and, and look at those. Um, I kind of encourage people to think about their level of consumption of the news, of social media, of you know, Twitter, 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 you know, um, banners coming up and, and notifications and things like that. And of just being in screens, particularly with MTI going on too. Yeah. Um, um, that's the technical, the, the, the like uh, at home uh, schooling for, for folks that maybe not know that um, mm-hmm. here in Kentucky. Um, I tell people it's like eating too much junk food, watch your consumption because not only can it be a distraction from that time you could be together on the couch, hanging out, chilling out, having a conversation, talking about some of those things that you might be like scrolling through to look, you know, what's going on and having a nice conversation with your, your partner, which is just can be greatly intimate, but it also has caused a lot of frustration um, in terms of boundaries with folks um, needing to, feeling like their partner is picking the social media or starting to get jealous about like you're talking to, you know, your friends, you're texting constantly. Why aren't you having time with me? Um, So I I only say that to say one, watch your consumption just for the anxiety level of things. It's not like ignorance is, is bliss and that's not what I'm saying, but I want people to recognize, um, you know, having a one-on-one conversation with a person that you respect and, and are interested in really hearing from is so much more satisfying than scrolling, 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 looking, 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 reading too much, and then feeling like you're ah too much input. Um, but also not allowing it to become a, a matter of conflict within your relationship. Have unplugged time, have it for your kids, have it for yourself, 
We all need to get away from screens during this time because that is one of our social outlets. That is one of the ways we're creatively being social um, outside of our small clusters. It's one of the things we can do. And as we move towards winter, I'm very concerned about people overwhelming themselves with that kind of stuff because there's not as many, may not be as many options to leave the house. So figuring out game nights with your family, game nights that are online, you know, that kind of thing, but, but making those intentional and social and, and really engaging in something and not allowing, um, you know, the need to just decompress to always come from an external remember your partner remember your date your dating person remember you have other ways to meet those needs remember yourself as just maybe needing to like go and tense to release and relax in bed and ah you know or take a nice bath remember those things that aren't that junk food consumption because it'll, it'll it'll give you a tummy ache eventually <laughs> but i mean those screens are how people are trying to keep in touch, you yeah. know, this timing, or I'm seeing what my friends and the community saying on Facebook, I'm seeing what people say on Instagram. But I think even that could be prioritized of like, you know, we could probably say for the FaceTime or maybe the special once a month Netflix movie thing that that uh, feels meaningful. But pr most people mm. I talk to when they're thinking of the Facebook scrolling and what they get from it, they're saying I'm doing it too much. It doesn't really give me, mm -hmm. um, fulfillment satisfaction like I think and you know you could have a platform on Facebook or Instagram and have followers and have interactions there mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, be messaging people on slack or meetup or something mm -hmm. there and I would say more often than not if you're on social media in some capacity and being available to that it is probably taking you away from what's going on around you from mm -hmm. kids or from partner or from uh, finding ways to connect with someone that maybe is a little bit higher up the food chain of going to give you that fulfillment and satisfaction mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. mindless. Yeah. So I just, you know, I think that's, uh, that's a helpful thing to just notice, you know, so that you're not having parallel play in your house and everybody's in their own yeah. corners doing their own things. Like exactly. coming together is really important um, in a safe way, you know? Yeah. Hello, Miss Amanda. Hi. Hello. Thank you all. That's I've been really enjoyed sitting over here listening to this and I feel like I'm even getting good info to share with my clients. Um so I think we are all set. I, I'm kind of curious where so I put your addresses in in case anybody wants to find your um find your websites. But any additional info or you know, this if somebody wants to kind of keep going or keep looking at this, what would you recommend? Where should they go? Uh, you mean keep keep going with this type of information, or what or if they want to expand a little bit more, you know, um, maybe maybe educate themselves a little bit more for yeah. like adult sex education or sure. something along those lines, communication about sex. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's it's on the forefront of my mind because I just wrote a blog post um, talking about sex and kind of finding time for intimacy in this polarized world. But um, the book from Emily Nagowski, who I kind of referenced in today's talk, Come As You Are, um, mm -hmm. I think it, the byline is the new sexual health for women. Um, if you are a woman or you love women, I think it could be really eye-opening. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Yeah, books are great. You can, um, the ASECT website, A-A-S-E-C-T, mm -hmm. which is the American Association of Sex Educators, Counseling, and Therapists, that's uh, that's where um, I got my training as a CST. It's um, they have a lot of book recommendations online. They also have lists of those of us that are certified. If you want to look it up by like your zip code across, it's an, it's it's actually international, but certainly definitely a lot um, uh, here in America. Um, so you can find somebody if you want to continue having these kinds of conversations or consults. You know, obviously. Here in Kentucky, there are very few of us, but Coralie and, and myself are here and taking clients, so you can go to our websites. Um, they're also, um, you know, I encourage people to also look at things that they they may not have, like go to some websites for to look at like some toys, if that's something that you 
don't have treat yourself uh like the mm -hmm. snl treat yourself of some fine leather goods and some good sex toys you know there's a lot of really fun places and amanda shared a really cool um uh um article with us that just was like naming some places but um goodvibes.com is a place that you can go this is a fun date night too get with your partner online or in person and go pick yourself something fun to play with and even if you're doing a distance both of you with a different toy you know or you're here and you're trying something new it adds the novelty we are lacking novelty that's good and have all this novelty that's unknown and scary. So mm -hmm. looking forward to something, you know, um, is really fun. Um, I really like Dame products. Um, they're beautiful. They're, it's a woman-owned -owned company. Um, they're mostly they're they're for women, um, but they're uh, they're um, all you know really highly made, um, high grade you know uh, toys. There's also Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. um, a place called Shag. You know, so like even going and doing those things, you know, um, there's a site called Make Love Not Porn, which is all people that send in, couples that send in, or multiple lovers that send in their own videos. So it is ethical porn. Um, these folks are excited about sharing with you their lovemaking, their real couples, their real feelings, their real bodies. So it's not this like, you know, um, what I explain to my kids, I say porn is like um, the sex version of like uh, WWF wrestling. Like it's all created and none of it's real and it's a big drama and it's not what it really looks like when you're wrestling and it's not what it really looks like during sex. So something like MLNP, which is you can subscribe to, is safe porn, it's healthy porn, and if that's something that titillates you to watch by yourself or with your partner, if you want to add some novelty, these are real people, real bodies, you know, um, and they're excited about sending it and sharing it out. There's also stuff like Dipsy, um, which is a website that, um, I mean, a, an app that you can download that has erotica and somebody will read it to you. So if that's something that you like or order some erotica and read it to each other online or in bed, you know, you can, you can do, there's lots of great resources out there that aren't Pornhub, I'll just leave that there, um, that, that, um, you know, that, that are helpful to creating some novelty, some interest, and then, you know, obviously, uh, a lot of, um, you know, looking up articles, finding, finding people, to, there's some great podcasts. Esther Perel has some great podcasts uh, called uh, Where Do We Begin? Or I think, um, and there's some other great uh, um, podcasts that you can look up that are about sex, about coupling, about, you know, um, uh, wellness. Um, and, uh, and those are updated so regularly. You know, I think that's a really nice way. If you're on a walk and you're listening to something, maybe you'll get some new ideas or have something that will bring up a conversation with it. So there's tons of resources. That's a good thing about media. And, and um, but just watch your screen time. Podcasts are nice because you can put it in. Audiobooks are nice because you can be listening to it while you're doing other stuff, you know, if, if you're time constrained. Um, but they there's also, some... They also have audio... Um, porn um, for people who are really auditory in terms of their for the sounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of kind of another way that's not necessarily screen time for um, exploring pleasure. And my biggest thing is don't let yourself feel the stigma. This is good stuff. We all have sex. Most well, most of us have sex. Want to have sex? If not sex, most of us want to have partnering and companionship and, and intimacy. Don't feel weird about ordering something if you've never ordered a sex toy. Just try it out. It will come in an Amazon box like every other thing you've purchased. Or it'll come in a box that looks like an Amazon box. It's not going to be bright yellow. Look, there's a cock ring in here. It, you know, it's, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to bite. Um, so I just encourage people, like, let yourself be free and creative about about seeking pleasure for yourselves and with your persons and your adults and your partners um you know and and you know sometimes reading stuff together is fun sometimes listening to stuff is fun sometimes you know finding something new to play with is fun but um don't let yourself 
feel guilty or talk yourself out of it as something like not okay because it's out of your, you know, we're, like I said, we're being creative. We're trying to figure out ways um, to, to encourage uh, new ways of connecting that are safe in this totally wonk upside down world. Mm -hmm. I keep expecting one of my rider to come in and be like, upside down (laughs) world. Yeah, it's definitely an upside down world right now. Well, Mm -hmm. thank you both so very much. We really appreciate it. And this, we will, we will put this video up on our YouTube page and we will, for the auditory folk, we'll have it on the Sonomind app so you can find it there. And if you go to our website, you'll see Coralie and Michelle's little faces and our, and you can click on those and it'll take them or take you to, to their links and you can find out more about them. And if you want to get in touch with them or do some work with them, please yes, do. Yes, please. So, yeah, Thank and we're doing, so I'm doing so all hard. telehealth now, you know, too, for safety concerns, and I think Coralie is as well, so, um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. so know that we're here for you, and if we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Well, so appreciate the time. Thank you. So much. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. Have fun, y'all. Be good. Be well. <laughs> Bye.